Um, I am here to talk about the process of doing a dime to call, building a dime to call home, which is a public art piece at Liberty Station. It's part of a program called Installations at the Station. The um, project starts by you put in your qualifications in an RFQ and I got accepted for that. And then the next step is you do what's called an RFP, which is a request for proposal. So when I got offered the chance to submit my proposal, I started doing research on all the different things that um, the Naval Training Center has been used for over the years. And um, one of the things that really struck me was that when recruits came into the Navy, they were told to take all their clothes off, including their skivvies, and send them back home. And everything they wore was government issued, military issued, Navy issued. And it all was exactly the same and fit, like you see in this bottom slide, in the exact same way in their sea bag, which is what their duffel bag is called. Um, the picture at the top is them getting rid of the, the sailors getting rid of their clothes and sending them back home. Sometimes they were donated to charity also. So I got really fascinated with that whole idea of giving up your clothes. I also really was engaged with the shape of the sea bag and how much it almost looked human itself, just like a torso. And so I started thinking about, and then, I, oh, I was walking by an Army Navy surplus and saw this beautiful sea bag with this lovely little bend, like a waist or something that was in it. And so I started thinking about ways in which I could deal with this shift of identity that sailors go through when they join the military, that they, they're, you know, they're all of a sudden a sailor. They're not, you know, considered all the other people that they were before. Then again, we know they are. They still have hometowns, they have friends, they have families, all that. So their clothing doesn't represent all of who they are. Um, this was another, this was my first idea was to hang and um, place in the arches of this building. I believe it was called building three. And halfway through this idea, I was told that they're not, they were gonna be um, remodeling that. And so we couldn't use that. So I changed my idea. And this was the drawing that um, got me started on this idea of the sea bags and then using nautical rope I wanted to make these forms that were basically growing out of this kind of proscribed um, set form that the Navy issues you. So this was my first drawing. And then for the proposal, I made these little maquettes and um, these maquettes are probably four inches long. Um, they're very small. And uh, there, I tried out a bunch of different materials. Sometimes they were uh, shape creed. I was using combinations with plaster. I was trying out a bunch of different materials along with rope, along with wire, um, all just experimenting with trying to have bits of the clothing, as you see there, show through in these concrete forms. So, because I wanted those to be little peeks into who these people used to be, kind of representing those clothes that they sent back home. So these are little maquettes and here's how the maquettes ended up. Um, and these I actually brought to the meeting um, to share with people to show them a very small version of um, what they would be getting out there. So I got accepted and um, throughout this whole process, I have to say that I knew Bill Feeney, I had talked with him about this project and knew he was going to be helping me. I would not have taken this on without his skill and expertise um, in many, many ways, but especially as a welder. And so what we did first, um, so now I've gotten the commission and we're in my front yard and Bill is setting up, we're making about a, what was it, Bill, about a one third scale? About a third yeah. scale yeah, um, model. So we're working out hopefully all of our issues. So here he is welding. And at the same time, I was knitting this sleeve out of the nautical rope. And this is my garage. 
And this is how it looks before we cast the concrete. So then we cast the small bag with clothing in it with concrete. And I think this one set up really fast, but um, we were pretty happy with really our first try. I believe that was our first try. So here it is in my driveway. And um, that also made us like everything encounter a bunch of new ideas of, of problems and solutions and things like that. So we ended up then, and because we had to have an engineer sign off on this project, um, this is the drawing that started. We realized that it would be insanely heavy if we filled it solid with concrete, so, or cement, it's not concrete, it's cement. Um, so we designed a, a foam interior this is the base that's underground that holds it up, uh, keeps it from tipping over. And then there's the wire structure inside. It's quarter inch steel. Uh, the knitted sleeves go over it, all this. So this goes to the engineer who then gave us some other specs and we, we didn't have to change a whole lot, but we, we had to change a few things and get all that signed off before we actually started making it. So um, this is so no one dies if they decide to climb on it or anything like that. So always good to know. So then we started into full on production and um, again, hilarious solutions. This is one of my favorites. Uh, we needed to have rings to go up if you saw on that, the welded, you know, on the welded frame. And how do you make circles? Well, you take a giant telephone pole that's in our backyard and you push it along you attach the wire right in there and bill kicked it along and bent the wire around the telephone pole because it worked um, these are for the smaller ones bill is the master inventor of gizmos and everything and so this is the other one that that formed the smaller wires uh, we basically had two and then we would push some in and pull some out so that we had a nice variety of, of uh, circle, circular forms. Uh, so there's my favorite picture of Bill with all of those circles of wire. Uh, it was a joyous moment. Um, at the me in the meantime, also in my backyard, I am trying to knock down the super white quality of the nautical rope and make it look a little aged. So I've got my camp stove out there and a bunch of dyes and I'm dipping them and I'm doing experiments and I'm trying out all these things. And this is definitely how it always goes when you're going there. Um, hang on, I've got a friend coming in there. Stacy's coming in. Okay, so here I am with the experiments along the way. And uh, then this is how you dry them is on your pergola in the backyard. <laughs> and meanwhile, Bill is over on the other side of the backyard uh, working on all this welding. I would say we, we did this about two days a week for what, about two months, Bill? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, we were working. Uh, it was good to not kill ourselves, you know, trying to do this seven days a week. So uh, we actually paced ourselves reasonably well until the end. Um, there's Bill standing on top of a ladder that he shouldn't do. Okay, we've got a few more folks coming in. So welcome to all of you who just popped in. I'm sorry if things got a little clunky in this. We are recording it so that um, it'll be re, uh, we'll, we'll be able to show it again too. So thanks for coming. Uh, so here's Bill in the backyard uh, finishing up one of the welded forms. And this, I think, is the 12 footer. And we'd, we'd bend them. Eventually, then we spray painted them too with Rust Oleum. There was a lot of uh, change that was going on as we were working on these. And once we got the forms made, the wire forms made, um, this is inside my studio, and I'm trying on the knitted sleeves. Uh, Bill's daughter helped me knit some of these sleeves, which was wonderful. Thank you, Blue. Um, so these are the dyed and knitted sleeves and they are on these plywood bases that eventually came off, but at the time they were holding everything up. 
And so this is a look at the foam, the bag that we used on the inside that we filled with foam. We ended up using um, spray insulation foam to kind of fill that up so that it wouldn't be 2,000 pounds. And there's a nice shot of that spray foam we just kept filling up in the bag. And then I use an actual sea bag that I ordered from Army Navy surplus. Um, that's what we cast in the concrete, the, the concrete in. Um, so it added another level of authenticity to this was using the real Navy issue bag. This is what we use. This is the, I'm not sure how many bags. It was a lot of bags of cementol. And um, we use that in kind of a slurry form. Here's the bag. These are some other friends who helped out. This is Max and there's Carrie right there. Max Lofano, Carrie Minical. That's my husband, Kevin, back there. Um, this is definitely an all hands on deck day. These are the what we thought was going to be a, a few days ended up only being two um, to pour all the forms. Bill, chime in if you have anything you want to say. But this is the good shot of the messy, very messy and very, uh, this, is the, this is the way it goes. We got tarps on the ground. Back here, Carrie is pouring water into the bucket that Kevin's using the drill to do the slurry. Um, Bill's getting ready. Max would grab the bucket, pour it in there. I would be jamming the clothes in, which is over here. And we had to do it all before it set. Um, these are the basket of clothes that we'd be choosing from just to remember that what were once my favorite pants are in there now. Always a fun thing to do. And this is what it would look like when uh, it was cast with the bag on it. So we would twist and turn the bag and try to get it to have this um, expression in it, basically to get some kind of a bodily form. So I really wanted to think about kind of a sag and a sigh and a little bit of a, a resignation in the, this, these forms themselves overall. So this is it with the bag on. And then just a few minutes later, we would tear the bag off um, before it got totally set. There are bits of it that stayed. We really all in liked this a lot where it got very rough, um, you know, kind of had that uh, feel of, I forget, these are those kind of decisions that get made as we're going, but little bits of the canvas would stay in there. And we were like, oh, that's just gorgeous. So we would leave that there. There's the infamous mat knife. So this is what it looked like when it was coming off. And um, we were, I was really excited to see these bits of the clothing that came out that we would see. And here we are in the backyard. We've got, I guess this is three of them are done at this point. Um, what was once a pretty backyard is now full of <laughs> all sorts of good stuff. Oh, and taking a break. An important part, sleeping dogs, part of every show, every install. So there they are, moving along. So once we got, there's my daughter and her husband helping out. Like I said, you get everybody helping on these things. And I think at this point, we're close to five in the backyard. It was two solid days of pouring, right, Bill? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there's another shot. I guess that's the same one. So then uh, came the infamous, how do we get it over there? Um, rented a U-Haul. Of course, the U-Haul, everything went wrong and had to end up there at night. Um, got two of my friends to uh, roll. These are the bases that go underneath the ground. Um, they each weighed, Bill, do you remember how much these weighed? 200 pounds? 250 maybe 250 something like that yeah there was they were super heavy uh we're loading them in the dark there's the little guys in there and then the those so we got those into the truck and the next morning drove them down to liberty station there they are all laying on their sides and of course you're scared to death that something's going to go wrong but we didn't crash everything made it and so then this is tim penny 
And Kevin and Max and Bill were the wonderful crew that I had that day to help do this. We started, I think about seven o'clock in the morning. Here we are unloading. We used a post hole digger to dig the holes. Very simple, kind of old school way. And then these bases got attached with the threaded rods. You can see just like that drawing, there's little anchor bolts that we use to attach them. And then what would happen is we would just roll them off and lift them up. That was the dream. Most of the time it worked really well. This is where we're about to. You can see Kevin and Bill. Bill doesn't like this picture. I think it blew out his back at this point. <laughs> um, <laughs> lifted up with one of those shoulder dollies and these guys then it so it was basically like tipping it up into the holes and there we are and we're all done ta-da and believe it or not i think we were done by 11 11 30 it went surprisingly well and smoothly so there they are all finished up and that's when we but probably within the first day or two that I came by and got this picture. So my intent in this piece was to have them age and um, reflect that time that was going on. Time is a very much a marker in this piece. And so it's been fun to go back and see how things are changing. So after a lot of rain this winter and um, all sorts of other, you know, airplanes flying overhead, all kinds of Santa Ana winds and everything else. They're really starting to have this patina that I call it that reminds me of boats being tied up on the dock or um, just the way in which nautical things age in time. So this is what they look like now. And Stephanie probably just went by this. There they are in a different light, but um, that's how they are. And that's it. Okay. So uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Bill, do you have anything to share too? You're supposed to be sharing ideas, thoughts. You are, you are commanding the stage very well. Um, yeah, you made it seem a lot easier than it was. <laughs> <laughs> that way a year and a half later for sure yeah <laughs> what was the worst part of it for you well i don't know that anything was worse than install but the install went amazingly well it's just those i can't imagine that <clears throat> the combination of the seed bag and the and the base anchor probably brought them up to five or six hundred pounds and that was just back breaking to um, anyway, yeah, my young <laughs> self would have dealt with it much better, but um, <laughs> no, I thought I, the, the part about it that didn't come through in the slideshow for me was that um, it was a very creative, almost painterly process in making the cages and forming them, and like it was. It was anything but a plan. It was like it was all your artistic sensibilities on the spot. Bend it this way, move it this way, twist it that way. And uh, that was a really interesting and creative part of the process, you know? And I don't know that the forms, I don't know if you could have pre-planned those forms, you know? Yeah, and, and that was also a really collaborative part of the piece, the project mm -hmm. too was, you're standing over there, I'm standing over here, we're bending it, we're twisting it. Same with even when we were doing the um, the concrete, the cement, you know, yeah. pushing it around and no, 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 that needs to be sadder. And, you know, which is also a lot, I think my favorite days are those days where you're just on the fly, making it work. Um, I had told Liberty Station, I would have between three and five of them thinking there would be a fail and it was really surprising, I think, to all of us that they all turned out. So um, we were real happy about that because <laughs> you just never know sometimes. But yeah. I haven't had the chance to see it, but I'm curious as to what kind of signage or explanation there is for the 
um, you know, in the area or do people would just walk by going, what? <laughs> they actually have a lovely um, permanent description, a really nice um, metal sign right in front of it that does speak a bit, has a bit of an artist statement of mine about how it references changing identities of military. I really thought a lot about, you know, not just the transition into military, but how difficult it is to come out of the military and back into civilian life. And so that was um, a lot of what the, the verbiage in the sign is about too. I'm not sure it's as much as, you know, what you think about when you're making a piece, but you know, it is nice to have that in there. Um, a dime to call home is, was kind of a, that was something that was an extra that I found that the sailors would get on Sundays, they would get a dime and they got to go to the pay phones and call home. So I really liked that reference to the time period in which these sailors were having this kind of um, experience of being recruits and everything. Anyone else have a question? Nope. Well, listen, I wanna thank you all for joining me. Um, I think it was a little bit of a problem getting on here, but this is recorded now. So hopefully we'll be able to revisit this chat again. Um, I wanna thank all the folks who helped me out. I wanna thank Bill, of course, for all of your work in this and throughout the years, all the work, but definitely couldn't have been done without you. And, um, you know, everybody else, my husband was amazing in this and uh, yeah, and Liberty Station for helping, giving me the opportunity to make this piece. It's really been enjoyable. So thanks everyone and we'll see you around. Okay, bye-bye.